Hey there. So in this video, let's take a look at taking the height map we created in the previous video and actually adding some output channels that we can use in other applications if we wanted to go ahead and maybe use this barbed wire material. So this is going to look a little bit different than how we left off in the previous video. And so the first thing that I did is actually came back to this level node here and I just brought in the black output or sorry, the black input to make these wire pieces just a little bit thinner. I think they were a little too thick as we left off in the previous video. So I wanted to dial that in. As well, you'll notice that I've gone ahead and gotten rid of that base material node. And now I've plugged everything into our final outputs. And once I've got those in there, I can just right click in our graph and view outputs in 3D. And now the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and get rid of this uh, like backing information, right? We don't need any of this backspace. And I just want to pretty much highlight this barbed wire piece. So let's go and create a new output node. So I'll type in output and we're going to use this for opacity. So I'll go and just change our identifier to be opacity. I'll call this opacity with a capital O. And for the group, let's go ahead and just type in material just in case we wanted to use this graph somewhere else. Now, in order to actually use this for opacity in our 3D viewport, we need to come down to usage and we need to go and find opacity. So now this is going to be used as our opacity channel. But what exactly does an opacity map look like, right? Well, we've kind of used it a little bit in the past when we went ahead and took a look at our histogram scan. And really, I'm going to be using the exact same node for pretty much the exact same process. So I'll come back to our opacity over here and start to type in histogram scan. And let's go and draw information from our final directional warp here. We'll plug that in and let's go and plug this into our opacity. So right now we don't have anything, it's black. And again, it's not gonna show up in our 3D viewport here because we actually need to refresh it. So let's just right click and view outputs in 3D. Now everything is black and that means that everything is transparent. But if I go ahead and start to bring up our position, right, you can see some things starting to show up. And so we can bring our position all the way up. And uh, I think that looks actually pretty good. What if I bring the contrast up? Yeah, there really isn't much of a difference there. So fortunately, I'm pretty lucky just with our height map as well. I think it's a pretty, uh, pretty clean height map. So really, we didn't have to play around with this too much, but sometimes you might get a little bit of weird ghosting, or you might get a little bit too much where it's a bit jaggedy. And so you're going to have to play around with your position and contrast, as well as the actual height map that you're bringing in, maybe making it a little bit more contrasted or a little bit softer. But now that we've got this set up, we're going to be able to go ahead and actually start editing it without worrying about any of that extra background noise. So the two things that I want to start defining are going to be the color and the metallicness of this because they're going to be both solid colors. So I'm going to go ahead and start to type in metal and we're going to have this PBR metal reflectance node. And this is just going to give us a bunch of different metallic colors as we can see in here. And because I have no idea what really the difference of the composition of any of these metals actually is, I'm just going to go strictly based on color and we're gonna go for iron. Now, if you're really big into metalworking and you know the difference and you probably think I'm an idiot for picking iron when this is clearly a titanium barbed wire, go ahead and tell me in the comments. Probably not gonna look at them. I'm kidding, I'll probably look at them and cry, but do whatever you want, it's a free country. So I'm gonna go and plug this into our base color and you can see that's going to update our color channel here. And I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing down for our metallic. However, this is just going to be a grayscale black and white image. So let's bring this in, swap it over to grayscale, and we can plug this into our metallic. And again, if you're not familiar with this, metallic is going to be denoted by white values. So let's go and just make sure that this whole color is going to be set to white. And once we set that, now you can see that it's going to be a very metallic and very shiny barbed wire. However, I don't like how smooth everything is and I don't like how shiny it is. So that's where we're going to want to kind of play around with our normals and our roughness. And so let's play around with our normal first. 
right? We've gone ahead and defined a pretty crisp normal map. However, we didn't really do any information editing with our height map. And so that's why everything's going to look smooth. So instead, let's go and use a kind of cool node, which is going to be the height normal blender. And this is going to allow us to plug in a grayscale kind of like noise map. And it's going to automatically convert that into a normal map and blend that together for us. So for this particular uh, asset here, I wanted to use a B and W spots two node. And again, this is going to be just a bunch of kind of random grayscale noise. And I'll plug that in. However, by default, it's not going to do anything because our intensity is set to zero. So I'm going to set mine to something really, really low, like 0 0.25. And we can see that it's now gone ahead and added a bunch of just kind of random noise to our normal map. Oh, that's going to put us in a pretty good place to start off. But now let's go and just kind of edit our roughness a little bit as well using a uniform color. Again, because roughness is in grayscale, let's go and switch this to grayscale. And so I'm going to add a blend node and I want to go and actually draw information from this. BNW spots that we had. So I'm just going to drag this down and plug this in. And so why do I have a BNW spots 2 node plugged in with a blend of a uniform color? Well, what I want to do is actually change this to be a blending mode of screen. And let's bring the opacity way down to like 0 0.35. So what I've essentially done is removed any of the darker values from this BNW spots node and essentially replaced it with this pure color. So now if I go ahead and start to move this color value up, it's going to bring all of the values up with it. However, it's still going to maintain kind of those brighter values in the BNW spots. And so darker values are going to be glossier, brighter values are going to be rougher. And so that's kind of the way I like to work is when working on a roughness map, I like to only really be adding roughness values because it can get kind of confusing when you're adding both dark values and bright values and knowing which nodes kind of control what. So for here, I like to just plug this in and it's a little bit uh, too rough right now. So let's go and bring this back down. And I think I'm gonna do something around uh, 0 0.15. I think that's probably a good level of roughness. So that's going to be pretty much it for the initial base outputs, but I went and defined those all initially because I actually want to use those in a particular kind of filter. And so what we can do is start to type in rust and you can see that we're going to have this rust weathering. And if I select that, it's going to bring in this really big node here. And if we take a look, it's got a ton of different options for particular inputs that we can use. and outputs that we can also use for our channels here. So first things first, we're not going to need all of these channels. So let's go and get rid of this. We don't need diffuse. We don't need specular glossiness. And I think the rest are going to be good. So what we can use this for is pretty much as the name suggests, go ahead and plug in all of these channels that we've created, pretty much add rust to them, and then just bring this back out and control the rust via this node. And so now I've gone ahead and plugged this all in and then replugged it all back out. And you're going to notice that um, it looks awfully bad, right? What's going on here? Well, just because we plugged in the channels doesn't mean we've plugged in all of the required information for this generator or filter to work. You can see kind of down at the bottom here, it also accepts ambient occlusion, curvature, and position. Now we're not going to need position. It doesn't really make sense for a 2D texture like this, which is more like a material rather than like a texture for a particular game asset in 3D. However, we can go ahead and draw ambient occlusion and curvature, and that's going to actually help drive this particular generator. So let's go and plug in our ambient occlusion to this place here. And you can see already, right, it's actually started to find a little bit of that information. And we can also use our normal map here. And actually, more specifically, let's go ahead and use this one here to create a curvature node. And actually, I like to use curvature Sobel. And we can bring this intensity up. And let's go and plug that 
into our curvature. So that now we can see this is actually going to show up a little bit nicer, albeit a little bit strong right now. So with this rust weathering, let's get rid of that channels section there and let's take a look at the effects. So we can see that rust spreading, right, is going to pretty much completely override our entire material with rust. So we're going to want to kind of draw that back down. Maybe something like, let's try 0.05, right, something kind of cool like that. We can also play around with some of the smoothness, right? Make it a little bit smoother or a little bit uh, kind of sharper. And actually, oh, that looks kind of cool. Maybe we want to bring that up just a touch. Let's try 0.1. Right, something kind of like that. And we're going to have a ton of different options to go ahead and play with if we want to go ahead and maybe change some of the blending of these channels and the rust as well. So go to town with playing with this node and see what kind of cool effects you can get with that. However, I want to keep going and I actually want to introduce a little bit of dirt as well onto this metal, right? I still think it's a little bit uh, kind of shiny. And so I want to dial that back just a little bit. So I'm gonna to start to type in dirt as well. And you can see we're gonna have a couple other generators down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select this dirt one up at the top. And again, it's going to require some very familiar information such as our ambient occlusion and our curvature. So let's go and bring this down. Again, draw from our ambient occlusion as well as our curvature. And we can see it's going to give us this nice mask. So what we can use this for is if I go ahead and start to add a blend node again after our rust weathering here, we can bring this up. And I'm going to go and use this as a mask. Let's plug this in. And I kind of want to have a bit of different random values for this. So we're going to use a B and W spots one node, which is going to be all this kind of random noise. And let's run this through a gradient map. And so we can see right here, right? What this has done is provided the mask in these areas to show up this gradient map here. Now it looks kind of bad on a couple of different fronts, mainly because it's not a good color and our mask is a little bit too open. So let's start by bringing our dirt level down to maybe around 0.5. And actually maybe let's do 0.55. I think that was a little too much. Right, so it's gonna be very close to the edges there. And so now we can go and switch our gradient map up. And again, I've got some colors just off screen here that I wanna go ahead and pick. And now you can pause the video and go ahead and select these colors if you want. And I'm just going to drag this kind of brown value inwards, kind of like that. Actually, maybe bring this up just a little bit there. Right, again, it doesn't need to be super, uh, you know, pronounced because it's such a very small effect. But at least it's going to give some color and variety to this particular asset. And so really, that's going to be it for our color. Now, I do want to also include this in our roughness because remember, Dirt's probably not going to be super glossy. So for our roughness, let's go ahead and add a blend node. And I'm going to just use the mask straight up to plug in over top of our blend. So that now we can go ahead and use the screen blending mode, right, to get rid of the black values and keep the white values. And maybe let's change the opacity to like 0.85, just so it's not super white. And uh, actually, maybe that's still a little too much. Let's try 0.75. And yeah, that should be okay. So that's just going to make sure that some of the dirt is going to add a little bit of roughness to the overall piece. So that's really going to be it for our channel outputs. Again, you can play around with any of these factors to really get a different look overall, but that's going to be the gist of it. So how do we go and save these out as textures that we can use elsewhere, right? Well, we could go and select each one of these individual nodes and then come up and go and save this as a bitmap, but that's going to be way too much time. And frankly, I don't know about you. I like to be as efficient with my time as I can. So what we can do is actually come up to our graph and you can see all of the different output nodes and what's in pretty much each one of those. So I can right click on this and go to export outputs as bitmaps. 
And you can see that we can go and actually export all of these if we want to, or kind of mix and match which ones we do and don't want. Now I'm gonna be bringing this into Blender, so we're not gonna need an ambient occlusion, and we're not really gonna be needing a height either. We can go and uncheck those, and once you've got that set up, you can go and figure out a place you wanna save it, what you wanna save it as, and what you want this exporter to call each one of your images. And once you're satisfied with that, you can go ahead and export your outputs.